back, friends. It's Michael Yates with the Ridgeview Podcast, where we try to cover everything hope, healing, and recovery related. Uh, my, you, you can't see it in the camera, but the hair on my arms are standing up because I have not only a friend, but a mentor uh, joining me today, Ben Harrington with the Mental Health Association of East Tennessee. Welcome, Ben. Well, Michael, I don't know if I should say thank you for that uh, goosebump riveting introduction there or not, but thank you. Glad to be here. Man, it's, uh, I was thinking about you driving in and I thought, really, who needs to have a podcast is Ben Harrington and the Mental Health Association of East Tennessee. You guys would be great at it. We, we do need our own, don't we? With you, the reach, and we'll talk about the association here in a minute, but with the reach that you guys have from Chattanooga up to the Tri-Cities mm-hmm. and the communities in between, rural, urban, suburban, uh, and with your rich, deep voice, you'd be perfect. Yeah. You'd be perfect. Listen like, to you. We need to have you sing a song. Maybe we can launch your uh, rock and roll career as well. No, I, I have to confess, I did win a uh, song contest when I was about eight years old, but it was a uh, dirty song contest at uh, a camp out, and you know, it's not for prime time. So we'll, sorry about that. We'll save that for another podcast. Yeah, good luck. All right. So, I mean, before me... It is, uh, well, the one of the real honors and, and prides I've had uh, in being in the public mental health industry for 30-some years has been serving on the Mental Health Association of East Tennessee Board of Directors. It's been a real honor. And what you guys uh, have produced with your annual report this year, we've got a little 2020 annual report. You can access on this on the website uh, folks uh, are interested in seeing it. Yeah, I, I believe so. And if it's not, I'll make sure we're, we get it loaded right away. Uh, it, it's yeah. there. I went yeah. and looked. And it, Is it okay? Yes. It, and it's, uh, it's a, an amazing document. Uh, so here we are. I mean, it's summertime where we got 2020 in our rear view mirror, sorta, kinda, we hope. Uh, what, tell, tell us what's going on with the Mental Health Association today uh, and some of the, the neat things that you're providing to the community around screen, free screening mm-hmm. tools and things of that sort. Well, Michael, the Mental Health Association of East Tennessee is an educational and advocacy and client service organization founded in 1948. Our parent uh, organization is Mental Health America, founded by Clifford Beers, the original uh, peer advocate, uh, person with a diagnosis, trying to advocate for better mental health services. You know, we, we, like everybody else, we're coming out of the pandemic, and it's important that our organization continue to talk about prevalence of mental health issues, how it affects people, how it affects different subpopulations, but then also put a new lens on it from what happened during the pandemic because things did change. And all of that factors into what our organization does. You know, we operate a call center. Uh, It's called the Peer Recovery Call Center. And every person who works in the call center is someone with a diagnosis. They're in long-term recovery, and they're really the best people to be able to help anyone find the right resources to have a a treatment home, but also motivate them to enter and uh, stay engaged in treatment because, you know, the illnesses are real. They're diagnosable. They're treatable. But if you go. Yeah. And so the call center is an important uh, program and service. We do lots of work with early intervention in schools. Uh, have a program called Mental Health 101. Counts on, it sounds kind of basic, but we teach kids, mm-hmm. middle and high school age, to recognize signs and symptoms of mental illness in uh, themselves, their peers, their family, diagnosis requiring their immediate action, or excuse me, symptom duration requiring their immediate action, that sort of thing. And that helps kids enter treatment earlier, which is nice. You know, we don't want folks to 
have to wait for a long time. Um, and then you did mention our screening program, and that's one we're getting kind of proud about. Um, before the pandemic, we screened about 3,000 people a year. And during the pandemic, we screened 10,712 mm -hmm. people. And so there's a lot of story behind that data. Mm -hmm. And um, it's also going to be more influential as time moves forward, too, uh, because there's a lot of uh, details we can extract from the data um, uh, moving forward. Yeah. Well, you mentioned the, the peer call center. So the uh, week before uh, this episode, uh, I had Richard Mosley, who's a certified peer recovery specialist on. And one of the things he talked about was the power of engagement with that peer voice. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally get how right. that resource would be so beneficial. Yeah. We'll put the number in the, the link uh, below this uh, so folks can reach out uh, and use that as a, as a resource. Well, thank you, Michael. Uh, that number is 865-584-9125. But, you know, the, the average person, they come into the call center, they are scared. They don't know what is transpiring with them. They know they need help, but they don't know what it is. Um, they don't know where to go. And they're even more scared about what will others think of them and, you know, for reaching out to get help. And they they, they need some comfort and calming voice to say, it's okay. I've walked this journey myself. Yeah, yeah. we, Richard and I were talking about uh, somehow we got onto Brene Brown's famous quote about, you know, mm -hmm. if you can share your story with someone who will listen with understanding and empathy, shame won't survive. Yeah. And so for folks that may have a high level of fear or worry uh, mm -hmm. ab about talking about what, what they're dealing with. Uh, I totally get it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you know, we, we constantly hear our staff say, Hey, this is a judgment free zone. And it is, you know, uh, the, the ladies who work in our call center, they've walked that mile already and nothing that anyone can tell them is something that they haven't either heard about previously or experienced yeah. previously. So that's the real neat thing is they're able to bond with, with callers, high percentage, over 90% of folks say, yeah, I want you to call me back, yeah. which means a lot. That means that they're connecting with that person in the very first phone call. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's remarkable. A judgment-free zone. I like that. Yeah. I think I'm going to uh, apply that to the uh, Dodge Charger space, and then uh, my home address space. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how that goes okay. over. Uh, so the I can uh, I can only imagine, given how difficult it's been for families, for students to think about you know virtual classes back transitioning back to in school, the anxiety that students are dealing with why Mental Health 101 would be so important uh, throughout the school district. Yeah, well, it, it, and it really goes to the basics. Uh, mental illness affects, uh, uh, or affected, I need to say, about one in five individuals before mm -hmm. the pandemic. But with the pandemic, that changed that, and it's now two in five people because of you know the onset of issues during the 2020 year with the fear and anxiety of the pandemic uh, or COVID virus, that sort of thing. But you know, the, the thing is this, people with mental illness are likely to have their symptoms start early. 50% of everyone had their symptoms start by age 14, 75% by age 24. So that means it really behooves us to uh, have an outreach program that reaches young people early so we can intervene with those we need to intervene with earliest. And then that allows us to guide them into treatment resources, whether it's here at Ridgeview or other communities or even the private sector. It does not matter as long as we help someone identify they need help. We motivate them to reach out to get help and we then have a place yeah. to start treatment early because it, it 
mental illness is like physical conditions. You start earlier, we can avoid all the the mm-hmm. uh, higher costing or invasive or uh, uh, types of treatments. You know. Yeah. No, that makes good sense. Yeah. So, are you with respect to school systems? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I hope there's you're seeing a trend of good news in that more schools are open to. Uh, having this type of curriculum be presented to students, yeah. and uh, that's good. Yeah, we st- actually started the program in fall of 2000 in two schools, and uh, before the pandemic, it had grown to 125 schools uh, across 30 counties, serving 32,000 kids per year. And so that that's indicative of school districts figuring out they have a need to reach kids and support kids, and who best to do it but the Mental Health Association? Yeah, yeah. well, that, that's wonderful. Just like those students, I am uh, pledged to Atul Gawande's adage, betterment is a perpetual labor. So I'm always trying to learn. And one of the things that the association does remarkably well is the psychiatric symposium each year. And I know it's coming up in the fall. Yes, sir. Uh, but I have learned so much from attending that each and every year. Well, you know, one of our uh, private joys has been to be in the field and to know that we can make a difference in the field by providing continuing education to our already very good mental health professionals. But, you know, we can bring in faculty from not only around the country, but some international faculty from time to time, and you know they can provide top-flight training that is going to reach and explore best practices that helps the local practitioner improve their toolbox. And the end result is better outcomes for East Tennesseans in their mental health treatment or uh, addiction treatment as well. Yeah, I, amen to that. So... Uh... As you look into the future and you think about where we've been, and I know there's still a great deal of, uh, oh, uh, some people may call it malaise, despair, just uh, frustration at maybe the, uh, the hope for the future. Do you, do you get a sense that we are on a path of improved mental health care and service for residents of East Tennessee? Yeah, oh yeah, I, I certainly do, Michael. And, and part of that actually lies in the hearts and minds of our citizens. You know, when, when we first got into this business a long time ago, and for me it was 1994, the, the stigma of mental illness was so prevalent that people didn't talk about it. It was something to be shameful of. But, you know, nowadays with social media and all sorts of, you know, opportunities, this podcast, YouTube, you know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, et cetera, we are able to communicate about mental health issues in a, a much different way than we were able to previously. All of that factors in in terms of, you know, it makes it acceptable to talk about mental health. Uh, conditions. It makes it acceptable to be um, okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. And all of that is like 10 steps forward to move people towards getting in the front door and then being able to work with, you know, uh, really sharp healthcare professionals to help them, you know, deal with whatever is troubling them. So I, I am very optimistic and You know, times have distinctly changed, and we have to now work real hard at recruiting more people to go into the business because there's a demand for services that is pretty high, and we don't have enough mental health professionals. Uh, But, you know, if you're looking at careers Mm -hmm. and thinking about job security and you've got, you know, uh, a young person who's about to enter college, that sort of thing, I would urge them to think about a mental health career because, you know, the mental health providers are constantly mm-hmm. hiring. Yeah. You know, no, so, that, so those fortunes are pretty good. Yeah. You know, no, I, I, 
I think I need to hear that. You know, I have a, a gut intuition, and sometimes I don't trust my own optimism because right. I'm kind of a glasses half full kind of guy. And it's like, are things really as promising in the future as I think or feel them to be? So that's good. Well, I, there, there was a recent uh, piece, and and I forget which news outlet about. Um, higher education degrees that some folks deem not so valuable because there were no jobs, you know, but uh, with regards to social work or nursing or medicine, there are tons of job opportunities. So I would encourage people to, to uh, look at those professionals, um, even counseling professions, et cetera. They, there are lots of opportunities there. Well, I always, uh, we're coming to a, nearing the end here and I'm always interested because I learn from other people when I ask this question but uh, so how does Ben Harrington take care of Ben Harrington oh good night nurse <laughs> uh, you know um, I, I think part of that is um, uh, we have two dogs and they don't have bladders that work in sync at the same time uh, so I get lots of steps in um, because, you know, uh, one dog has literally a 22 minute bladder and that's, that's as good as it's going to be. And so I, I'm up and down a lot with that. And then, uh, Ben also likes to read a lot. Um, I have some favorite authors, um, Stephen Barry, William Martin, W.E.B. Griffin. So I have some favorite authors, yeah. right? And I, I do enjoy working around the house and landscaping and gardening that sort of thing and following your beloved red Sox. oh you know it <laughs> it's red Sox nation down here baby uh i mean you know we'd be remiss if we didn't at least give a shout out to your team so red, red Sox nation celtics nation you know patriots nation yeah yeah well you know maybe a future episode we can talk about the virtues of tom brady Oh, yeah, who went to that uh, podunk school up there up north? Yep. Could, yeah, j could. Just north of the Ohio border? <laughs> could have something to do with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ben, thank you. I mean, as I said at the outset, uh, I consider you not just a friend, but a mentor. I've, I've looked up to you for years, and you've always been a great resource and inspiration. Uh, your advocacy for mental health, treatment, care, uh, has been unparalleled uh, in this this part of the state. We really appreciate it. We'll put uh, in the links uh, all the necessary information, the website, uh, the phone number for the call center, and encourage folks to go use the screen, the free screening tools, mm -hmm. uh, which are so vitally important. I hope you'll come back. Oh, uh, anytime. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we don't need an agenda. We'll just start conversing and see where it goes. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for coming in, and thank, thank you. you for tuning in, folks. Uh, we always appreciate you taking time out to uh, tune into our latest episode. Please uh, make sure that you subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell so that you receive notification of our latest episode. Take good care, and we'll see you next week.